All right. Swedish review, not like so see. I don't know. It's, it sounds like something. I don't know what it is. If any of you guys know what the Swedish review is, <laughs> please tell us. We are here in Swedish Blue, and we are ready to go for a little test drive, a little get a feel for her, see how she is. Compare her to, uh, say, Creamy Futso, Creamy Futso, uh, or Red, in in the workings underneath, because it's quite a different setup this fan. So, let's get right into it. Oh, starts up like that. Bit of a headrest. Headrest, it's nice and comfy. Headrest, still got no seat belts. Yeah, that's true, but. There's the safety feature. Oh, it's quite far back. <laughs> We're in the countryside. We're in the countryside. This is what happens in the countryside. We're stopping for the horses. Hiya. For the horses. Swedish blue! So we've arrived. That was a lovely, uh, lovely jolly through the countryside. So we've got 1978 <laughs> Swedish late bay single cab. Late bay single cab. Picked her up in Denmark. It was a bit too much of a bigger project for the guy that I got it from. So I found it on good old eBay. The reason I went all the way to Denmark for her was because she has the original Volkswagen engine and gearbox that came with the van when she rolled out of the factory. So it's a two litre and it's a flyer gearbox. You, you refer to it sometimes as a six rib gearbox. What it really means is that you can sit on the motorway with this combination of engine and box in an old bay van and go 70 mile an hour comfortably without feeling like you're holding everybody up and the van is... <laughs> Like that. She's had a full resto. She is about 95% done. And we've got a few little bits to do on her. And she's only just been running. Engine uh, refurbished by the Volkswagen Engine Company. Engineer bloke there, Adrian, Welsh fella. Absolutely amazing. I've seen lots of stuff on Facebook saying, who knows anyone who should refurbish my engine? Without a shadow of a doubt, those guys know what they're doing. Can't recommend them highly enough. Volkswagen Engine Company. Link down there in the um, d script, Sean. So what's interesting about this one, and with some of the other vans that we've got that have been restored, painted, looking shiny, I don't really know what to do with them now. You know, we're used to our other vans where we can throw stuff in the back of them and, and you know, do all sorts of stuff with them. As soon as you get something in the back of this, you're like, oh, I'm going to scratch it. So the late bays, so the bays went from, what, 68, 69 through to about 1980, something like that. And by the end of the bay windows, it is incredible how much Volkswagen had done technologically between. Yeah. Yeah. Have you drive, I mean, you've driven Futso. Futso and um, Red. Big Red. Yeah. And, and actually, now you've driven this one feels completely different the gears the steering yeah the, the just the ride as well everything i mean the late bay technology is is completely different if you haven't driven a late bay versus an early bay uh i recommend give it a go they're kind of very very different and i don't know why they should be so different they look very similar right but they have so the difference between the early bays is Read them off. Send it, mate. Indicators, bumpers, wheel stud pattern, brakes, back lights, steering box, accelerator pedal, steering column switch, seats mount, cylinder heads are different, door hinge. Ah, oh, rear panels different, flared, non flared. Fuse box, there's some changes to the dashboard. The front beam, I think the gear linkage is different. 
that is really off the top of my head about it. I think that's a pretty good list. Guys, if you if you know of any other changes, let us know and you can tell Jazzy. You can learn yeah, something. Yeah, no, I'll learn a bit more. <laughs> so I guess if you want a work van nowadays, what's the equivalent? Pickup trucks. But the back of the pickups, like maybe a double cab, one of these, is only got like four foot, four foot. It's like big bit in the back, not as big as this. So they're very practical for that reason. However, I guess you still only have three seats, right, in this one. But hey, three better than two. You could have a bike. I mean, that's the option. You could have a bicycle. Would a bicycle be the right way to go? Who knows? There is one thing you can do with a single cab. You go camping in the back. You don't mind getting rained on. Put a little, no, with a roof. With a roof. So I, I like the idea of single cabs to put a camping pod on the back of it. Because the camping pod thing, oh, I'm going to make camping again, but I like camping. So the camping thing, you could build a pod Slide it off the back, keep it in your garden, maybe, for your mates to come and sleep in yeah. when they get a bit drunk. Uh, spare room out the back. Spare room in the garden. Yeah. And then when you want to go camping, you just put it on the back of your van. Jacket on the back. You don't need to have a work van, and you don't need to have a camper van. You can have a worker van, camp, camp, cabin. I painted that. <laughs> the worker van, 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 cabin. That's new from JML. <laughs> ben, if you were to put a price on one of these vans, mm. what would you say? Interesting. So the early bays, which this isn't, this is a late one, command more money because they're a bit cooler. Yeah. According to the interweb. Yeah. Uh, late bays, I've completely changed my mind on now. I used to think early bays every day. Um, probably, I don't know why I'm doing that. Cause early I'm, bay every day. Early bay every day. <laughs> Bruv. One of these, probably in this good condition as an early bay. 15, 20k maybe. This one, because of the engine and box combination, Maybe a similar sort of price. Mm. Not as common as camper vans, of course, of which there are many. Absolutely. Maybe you, people would say not as practical as camper van, three seats. But it is cool. Single cabs are cool. Yeah, they're nice. Things you've got to look out for when you're buying one of these old vans. Rust. The bottom line <laughs> is rust. Rust, rust, rust. Look under it, in it, outside it, round it. Has it got an engine? Has it got... You're right. Oh, it's quite a good thing to look for. <laughs> Check for end play. Check to see if it turns. If it doesn't run, run. Not end of the world. Mm. If you've got a block that you can give someone else in return for another engine. As well, these, these engines are notoriously easy to work on. Yeah, he did it. I did it. You can probably do it too. Apart from his one's just broken again. Yeah, there is a leak. Tow hitch. Original. Uh, seriously worth having as a commercial vehicle. Or if you want to go caravanning. You've got that right on your neck. Oh no, it's gone in. Got it. Whew, that was close. You're fibbing, man. Nah, no, 100%. Wash it back. Okay. Two litre. Engine code stamped on the top here. That's what I wanted from the original paperwork when I bought this, along with the code on the gearbox, so that I could see if it was original against the Swedish paperwork, which it showed. Um, this is single carb. It would have been electronic ignition, historically, uh, which is maybe a bit better on the fuel, but it is a little bit more fiddly when it goes wrong and harder to get hold of the electronic ignition stuff <laughs> anymore. So, went over to uh, Weber Carb. Um, so we got rid of a lot of the electronics. And that was the other side of it. From an ongoing maintenance point of view, I wanted something that I could work on or even try <laughs> something that I could try and work on. New engine, shiny, shiny, new engine. I love how every really? time it just comes back to shiny, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know shit all about it. What we have yeah. here is a fine example of a two litre refurbished engine that you cannot get too many of. You can get them, but they're more expensive than the standard one. That difference between the 1600 and this two litre is all different. So I suppose, realistically, you can carry a whole load of stuff in there, can't you? Spacious. That is the proper practical thing about these single cabs, isn't it? A bit like Futsal, really, this one. Yeah, yeah, just shinier. Shinier. The thing with Futsal, you put loads of crap in it because it's old. Yeah, yeah, it And you wouldn't put lots of stuff in this because you scratch it, right? No, that's it. Oh, locker. Here we go. So we'll look inside. Whoop. Locker. 
gas tank. Gas? Gasoline. Petrol tank. And look, vast amount of space. Spacious. It's like a basement. Yeah, this is the basement of the van. Oh, and the uh, swimming pool up above. Oh, that would work. That's too cool. It does have all the refineries of a modern vehicle. Refineries? We have indicators on the stick that work. We have flashy lights, flash, flash, horn. We have uh, even got windscreen wipers on a stick rather than on a little knob on the thing. We have got hazard lights. We've got a little light there when you pull the handbrake on. Let you know the handbrake's on so you don't drive away with the handbrake on. Uh, we have got a handbrake on this that actually works, which is quite nice. We've got, uh, we have a working fuel gauge. It's always a bonus. We have a few more lights than the earlier ones do. Tells us about the battery. Tells us about a few other things. Tells us whether our main beam is on. Um, look at, oh look, picture skew. Very picture skew, as uh, Del Boy would say. Picture skew. Another fairly pointless review. <laughs> Job done.